Yes, good morning, everyone. I hope uh, you are able to hear me and you are able to watch my screen. Fine. So today we are going to have the discussion about how we can prepare for an interview in Cloud Hathium. Uh, okay. So please subscribe to our YouTube channel to get the latest videos. And today, whatever we are going to discuss, that that you can uh, get it through YouTube channel. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. So whatever the session we are going to discuss today, that will be uploaded this year. So the today topic is uh, how we have to prepare for an interviews in the four modules. What are the interview questions they are asking right now? Global HR model. Payroll module, absence management module, and talent management module. Okay, so these four modules we are going to discuss. And again, this is like last two weeks what we are facing the interview questions uh, from the interviewers last uh, three, four weeks. Again, next week also we are going to have the session. We are going to have the session again next week. So obviously we'll come up with the new questions. Okay, so let me open the Excel sheet. So the first moment when you say you are working in the cloud uh, HCM, I hope everybody is able to hear me, right? Can you please ping me on the chat window? Say yes or no. You are able to hear me or not? So that I'll be flexible whether I am I audible or not. Thank you. So someone has says yes, fine, thank you. Fine guys, so uh, the first thing they will ask in the interview, okay, what you did in the global HR module? So you said you are working last three and a half years in the cloud, three or four years in the cloud, how many implementations you have done? So we can say that uh, the implementations, uh, we have done around uh, three to four implementations. Each implementation generally takes around uh, uh, six months time. That is a very regular, uh, process six months time and of course we can say that uh, there was some support and uh, as well as the you know uh, uh, time taking because sometimes what happened whenever we raise some uh, issues yes sir service request to oracle it will be delayed so due to that also the project guidelines uh, deadlines will be delayed so we can say uh, let's say three years of experience in our uh, profile uh, around three to four projects around three to four projects sometimes they ask you in the interview like uh, what you have done last one year uh, why because four to six months is sufficient uh, to implement hcm sas model so that time you can say that uh, we have done the implementation and also we are providing the support and also we are providing the support that's what we can say fine next so tell me which project you are working and uh, what you did in this project. What in the sense, what models you have involved in the implementation. Let's say we involved in the global HR, payroll, options management and talent management. So that's what we said, for example. So when we say global HR, tell me what you did in the global HR. So we have to explain this entire process. So in global HR, uh, we have configured an enterprise structure and after that, uh, we have configured and workforce structure. Workforce structure is nothing but jobs, positions, grades, and business units and departments. There's all locations also come. So we can say that we have configured an enterprise structure and also the workforce structure and also the workforce modeling. And also we involved in the workforce modeling. Nothing but employee hiring, employee transfer, employee global transfer, mass update. This all we'll call it as a workforce modeling and also involved in the area of responsibility and the documents of reports, uh, records preparation and checklist preparation and also the uh, configuration of the trees. Already we discussed about the trees, right? This, we, we have, we did it the trees, like only two trees you can say, uh, one is uh, the position tree and uh, Another one is a department tree. We have to say that uh, I have used the position trees in the approvals and also I have used the department trees in the department trees in the security profiles. We have already discussed, right? That's what we have to explain. 
So in global HR, we can say the five things mainly. One is we have configured enterprise structure. The second one is workforce structure configuration. The third one is workforce modeling. The fourth one is roles and securities and approval management. The fifth one is a trees and hierarchies. So this is what we have to explain uh, what exactly we have configured in global HR module. Then once we say, yes, we have configured all, they'll ask you, did you involve in the uh, requirement gathering from the end users? So we can say that, yes, uh, we will be, we can say that our senior person is there because you are in offshore, right? You are in India and your client is there in Dubai or uh, Qatar or uh, in UK or US client. So you will not be able to interact with the client directly, right? So what we have to do is, we have to say that our project manager or functional consultant, uh, senior functional consultant is there at onsite who is interacting with the client directly and gather the requirement and is going to prepare the setups documents and is going to forward to us on offshore. And we are from offshore doing this all functional configurations here. At the same time, very, very few times we have interacted directly with the business user and also we have configured. It doesn't, it means that we are telling indirectly, we are comfortable to interact with the business users and gather requirement, but we didn't get chance to work uh, towards to that. That's what we are going to explain, okay? So global HR model, as I told, uh, when we explain very high level, the next questions comes, obviously what they'll come up with, uh, explain me what is enterprise structure and what exactly you did in enterprise structure. So we have to say that, uh, enterprise structure, uh, we have used ESC, enterprise structure configurator. Through ESC, we have configured first enterprise is defined. Then after that, we define legal entities, then business units and reference data sets. And after that, departments, jobs, grades and all. This is what we are supposed to explain. Okay. So then they'll come up. Have you worked with the divisions? No, we have not worked with. Have you created LDZ and Ledger? LDZ, we can say that yes. We have created because without LDZ, we can't hire employee. Okay. So you are going to hire an employee for a legal entity. Definitely your legal entity should be associated with LDZ. It is mandatory. And ledger, we can say some financial consultant has created that we have attached for our legal entity. So that's how we have to say that what exactly we have done in enterprise structure configured. Okay. So then they'll come to you. What is legal entity? This all are straight questions legal entity is nothing but a legal organization where the client is doing the main uh, where the client has registered their business where the client has registered their business okay so and uh, what is psu payroll statutory unit so this all definitions they lost i'm not going in depth again the definitions because we have already discussed and i hope you are already having the videos on your google drive from rtl whatever we have shared you can go through that okay Next, so the, the, the next question is what is reference data set? So reference data set is mainly to refer the set of data, to refer the set of data. Uh, what data you are referring? Departments, jobs, grades, and locations. To whom you are referring? You are referring to business units. It means indirectly, you are assigning this all business objects to the, sorry, this all uh, objects to the business units you are assigning. So the client will ask in the interviews, they'll ask you how many reference data set you have created. We can say six to seven reference data set. Depends on the requirement we'll be creating. Depends on the requirement. For example, if my client says these two branches are having different uh, departments, these two branches are having different departments. Definitely I have to create one RDS for this, another RDS for this. Maybe 10, 20, 30. It depends on your requirement. You are going to create the reference data set okay definitely they'll ask you the question what is the difference between common rds and normal uh, rds this questions what is business unit then they'll ask uh, the, the, the uh, jobs so what is the difference between job and position job is a generic it is mandatory when we are implementing hcm we must configure the jobs without jobs we can't implement a hcm and then positions what is position so position is an uh, no headcount. Whenever you whenever the client says detailed approvals, head counting, and other options, whenever they required, we'll go for locations. But locations are optional, not man 
sorry not locations positions positions are optional not mandatory okay so we can say that we implemented both jobs and positions then how many types of positions are there so you have positions four types right what are that single incumbent pooled none and shared differences definitely they'll ask you what is fte full-time equivalent they'll ask you all these details okay so then uh, they'll come up with the types of roles tell me what are different types of roles we discussed already abstract role duty role job role and data role then they'll ask you tell me which role you have created when you are working in the project what roles mainly you have created mainly will be creating the data roles okay mainly will be creating the data roles why you created data roles what is the requirement so my requirement is when i implement hcm to my client some employees wants the data which is related to their department they should not access other departments data and also some managers required other departments data also because he is a manager he wanted to access four to five departments data or two to three branches data branches means business unit or two to three countries data means one or two countries data so like that they would like to go ahead with accessing the multiple organizations data that's why we can say that we created a data role and we created security profiles then we have uh, we have assigned these data roles to the users then they'll come up with tell me how many security profiles are there so how many security profiles are there there are six types of security profile so you have to discuss with the client sorry interviewer here oracle fusion hcm security profile there are six uh, sorry eight security profiles person security profile department this all country organization payroll payroll flow this all you have to remember position transaction so country wise you would like to hide the data then you will you will go for use this particular security profiles okay so this is mandatory so standard question in the interviews they'll ask okay then what is area of responsibility then what is checklist then what is document of records this all questions are important these three questions are very important area of responsibility is mainly to assign the uh, particular area to the user that's what they'll ask the question in the interviews that i will prepare next level videos about especially this three concept sorry four one is area of responsibility we'll call it as a or two document of records three checklist the fourth one is a position synchronization position synchronization this four videos i'll prepare and share it this okay next uh, in global hr other than that uh, mainly this task they'll ask you manage enterprise uh, hcm information here yeah. so tell me how many employment models are there two tier employment model and three tier so what is basic definition of employment model so employment model is basically used to group the three components the first component is work relationship the second one is an assignment the third one is employment terms okay so what is a work relationship the relationship between the worker and legal employer the relationship between the worker and legal employer then what is uh, uh, what is assignment assignment is nothing but a set of information which we are assigning to the employees set of information which we are assigning to the employees and it's going to be job position grade location manager office timings salary this all comes under assignment and the third one is a payment term, employment terms i'm sorry like six months contract one year full time like this there will be a, some contracts here so this all we are going to have these options so this is about uh, the employment models definitely there will be a question in latest version release 13 uh, we will see only two tier employment model suggested by oracle in two tier employment model how many versions are there like uh, the, the client the interviewer will ask you how many versions we have in the two tier employment model so we can say that again uh, in two tier employment model single assignment single assignment with contract multiple assignment multiple assignment with contract four four versions are there earlier it was three now it is four the next question is what is difference between person number and worker number so that's they are going to ask us so
So very simple person number will be generated at uh, enterprise level. You can see that. So when you hire an employee, two numbers will be generated. So we'll be hiring an employee for a particular legal entity, right? So there will be a, some number generated here and uh, enterprise level also the number will be generated. Let's say this number is generated here. So even if you transfer an employee from here to here, maybe some other number is uh, generated, but person number remains the same. It is at enterprise level. So it is at enterprise level. So this is at uh, legal entity level. This is a particular legal entity. So that, that's two numbers will be generated. You can see the methods, manual method, automatic prior to submission, automatic upon final say. So these all are uh, different methods which we have. So automatic prior to submission, what happened? Person numbers will be generated and there uh, it may create a gap. Because when you are hiring an employee uh, prior to your uh, submitting for approvals, the number is already generated, but the transaction may not be approved. So if it is not approved, obviously, if it is not approved, obviously that, that number will be wasted, right? That's going to be wasted over here it is that's why we'll call it as oh, any other uh, automatic upon final save option this all we will be discussing okay fine so that's that's person number and all then definitely they'll ask you tell me what is uh, value set what is uh, flex fields types of flex fields uh, how many key flex fields are there in hcm two key flex fields people group key flex field and uh, cost allocation key flex field right and global HR only one, that is people group key flux field. What is the purpose of that? The purpose of people group key flux field is uh, to group the people, means to group the employees based on technology or based on some skills or based on some area. It depends on the requirement. We are going to group it. We are going to group the people. That's why we'll call it as a people group key flux field. That's why we'll call it as people group key flux fields. Okay, so that's that's all we will get it from the global HR module. From the first module, this is all the questions. What is LDZ? This is a straight questions. Legislative data group and what it, it contains, uh, it's group of PSUs, payroll statutory units. What is TRU, tax reporting units, uh, which is used to configure the taxes. And uh, what are different types of uh, uh, transfer and global transfer difference? Transfer means within legal employer, global transfer means uh, global transfer means across the legal employer from one legal entity to another legal entity. So when you do that global transfer, how about the numbers? Worker number will be generated or it will be changed. Can I use global sequence? This, this type of questions, uh, definitely you'll get it from here. This, there is always work around here. Fine, guys. Any doubts in the global HR? First module we have discussed. We have discussed first module. Any doubts you have? Anybody, please enter in the text window. So you can see the difference between person numbers. Very important, worker numbers. So work relationships are three types. One is uh, employee. Two is uh, Contingent worker, three is a uh, Yes, Balakrishna, that is a number generated. See, I have my uh, company, Tata Enterprise. Within the Tata Telecom, Tata Enterprises are there. Uh, Tata Telecom, Tata Motors and all. So in Telecom, we have hired one employee. Some number will be generated, but enterprise level, head office level. For big companies, it is required for big industries like Reliance, Tata, like uh, some people are having, two numbers will be generated. Enterprise level one number and the legal entity level. So you might be the employee in the Tata Telecom, Tata Docomo, for example, and one number is generated at top level, Tata, because indirectly you are a Tata employee, and work, worker number will be generated in Tata Docomo legal entity. After some time, maybe the, 
the employee will be resigned here and he has joined in Tata Motors. So the person number, whatever is there last time, because seniority we have to maintain. So he's uh, working for Tata Enterprise last 10 years. Out of 10 years, three years in Tata Docomo, four years in Tata Motors, and uh, three years in the Tata Finance. Total uh, enterprise uh, seniority is 10 years, but current uh, Tata Finance is just three years only. So enterprise level seniority, company wise, company in the sense legal entity wise, seniority we have to calculate for promotions or for any compensation or any for other things that will be used. That's why we will call it as this. Okay, fine guys, this is our first module, global HR. So other than this, I don't think so you will find some questions from the global HR. But anyway, that's, uh, as I told, we'll be finding every week uh, these options. Descriptive flex field, I don't think so through HDL. Yes, yes, we can do it. There is. So you have an option uh, how to load uh, uh, descriptive flex fields through HDL. Separate uh, syntax is there, I think we did in our training in the HDL. Isn't it? TM DFF uh, load. You have to just uh, small uh, change. Uh, you have to change the syntax a little bit, not much. Loading flux fields data. Yes. Okay. Metadata and flux name, and uh, you have to provide this. Okay. Fine. So that is our first module, global HR uh, module. What questions they ask? Geographies. We can say that uh, it's already loaded into the applications. Whatever country you are implementing, 